I'm so pleased. I didn't expect it to happen. When I left, I thought I would never go back. Mm. And in 2020, I thought the Labour Party would need 10 years at least to get back into government. Keir Starmer has done remarkably in just three years what it took Neil Kinnock to do in about nine. I've just had a message through. Keir Starmer, leader of the Labour... It's from it's from the press office, not from Keir personally. I'm delighted that Mike Ga Gapes has chosen to rejoin the changed Labour Party that I lead. Like many others, Mike turned away from the party in recent years because it no longer represents traditional Labour values, but we've changed and there's no going back. Uh, what's all this about? Well, I'm delighted to say that Mike Gapes, if we've... Don't just throw this together. Mike Gapes, uh, former Labour MP, now back in the Labour Party, uh, joins me in the studio now. Morning, Mike. Morning. Remind us... Uh, first of all, why you left the Labour Party? I left for three reasons. I'd been a member for 50 years at that time. I left because of the appalling foreign policy positions being taken by Jeremy Corbyn and the people that he had in his leader's office. I was really angry about the anti-Semitism in the party and I also disagreed with the approach that Corbyn was taking, which I said was facilitating Brexit. So there were three reasons for me. But the culture of the party was also was toxic and it was really hard. I, I, so explain to me, because and I've, I've spoken to others, Luciana Burgess, who's come back into the party as well. And I think, we, you know, and I spoke to lots of you who left at the time and formed, you know, what became Change UK. Um, I don't understand. I understand why you were unhappy. How do you feel about Keir Starmer, given that he sat in the shadow cabinet, didn't speak out on any of that stuff? told the country to make Jeremy Corbyn Prime Minister twice, didn't speak to Luciana Berger for about two years while all this was going on. How do you square that with you wanting to be back in the Labour Party now? I've, um, firstly, the Labour Party has really changed. And I, it, the wrench of leaving was a really hard thing to do. I was agonising for over a year before I actually left. Um, and a lot of my friends at that time who stayed in the party, like my very good friend Wes Streeting, for example, who was my parliamentary neighbour at the time, they made a different judgment. They chose to stay and to, to work for, for change internally. Well, suppose, but the and, distinction is that Wes was on the back benches you know, and was I, I, hugely I, outspoken about Jeremy I, I understand that. Keir Starmer wasn't. No, there were some who, who, who were in the shadow cabinet as well, but I do know for a fact that they were also in the same kind of agonies all the time about what was happening. And if you make a decision to stand as a Labour candidate in the election, uh, then you have to take the consequence of that. I couldn't do that anymore, and that's why I walked away. But I understood why many of my friends made a different judgment, and they remained my friends. And I'm delighted this morning. I'm getting so many messages from hundreds of Labour people saying, thank you for coming back, welcome back to your home. And some people saying, you didn't really leave the Labour Party, the uh, Labour Party left you. Um, what what will you do now? Will you stand again? No, I'm 70 years old. No, I, you're not. I, yes, I am. <laughs> and I had 28 years nearly in Parliament. I'm going to work hard to support the party in whatever way I can and uh, do what I've always done, knocking on doors, giving out leaflets, speaking at events or whatever. But no, I'm, I've retired. And what do you say to people who say, well, look, you, you, you didn't just leave and go and become an ordinary member of the public. You went off, you st stood for another party. That's right. Um, some people say that should bar you from, from joining the Labour Under Party. Under the Labour Party's rules, you are excluded for up to five years, but the National Executive can make a special dispensation. They, this is not unprecedented. They've done it for other people in the past. And so I got the invitation, I got the call from the General Secretary at the end of last week, inviting me to apply and I have applied on Sunday online to rejoin and I assume given that I've been welcomed <laughs> that there won't be any problem. And what do you make of Keir and where he is right now? Do you think he needs a better answer to the question of why he served in Jeremy Corbyn's uh, shadow cabinet? Because even in his letter exchanging with uh, Luciano Berger last week he talked about the shameful period of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party and, and how people hadn't spoken out. He didn't. I, 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 I think um, you know everyone has to make their own position clear about what they did at that time, and it's not for me to second guess what was going on in internal discussions because yeah. I wasn't there. Yeah. I do know um, that lots of people, and both those who went inside and those who didn't, and those of us who left, 
had a similar view about the horrible nature of what the Labour Party had become under Jeremy Corbyn. And I'm so pleased. I didn't expect it to happen. When I left, I thought I would never go back. Mm. And in 2020, I thought the Labour Party would need 10 years at least to get back into government. Keir Starmer has done remarkably in just three years what it took Neil Kinnock to do in about nine. Yeah. And he's got Labour into a position similar to what Tony Blair got Labour into. So I think he's shown real leadership. And so I th I'm, I'm happy to come back on that basis. And what's happened to Change UK? Is that still a going? Uh, kind of no, it's not. And oh, you know that. Oh, um, we, we, we had a, a, a disastrous internal period. We split. Some people went to the Lib Dems. Some of us went on kamikaze missions in 2019. <laughs> um, but, That's all done and dusted now. Well, yeah, I kept my integrity. I, I said Corbyn was unfit for, to be Prime Minister yeah. and the British people agreed with me. Yeah. Mike Gabe, it's really good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Oh, thank Mike you Gabe's very there. much. And Mike has written for uh, Times Red Box today. Um, so if you want to, you can read Mike's piece online.